Welcome to the Changing Conversations podcast by SGS. This is the second episode in our series focused on sustainability in the footwear industry. My name is Daniel Tatarski, and today we'll continue our exploration of the Blue Sign Footwear Initiative and what it actually means. In this episode, our experts will discuss the scale and impact of the footwear industry, strategies for reducing environmental impact, and the importance of supply chain transparency. We'll also hear from Vibram on why they partnered with Blue Sign and how consumer awareness is driving change in the industry. Joining me again are Ron Hu and Marco Guazzoni. Um, Ron, can you tell us about the scale of the footwear industry and the general impacts? Okay, so uh, the global automotive in industry produces around 90 million cars annually. In 2023, footwear production was estimated to be about 24 billion pairs. So global smartphone production is about 1.4 billion units per year. And uh, books, we, we produce only 2.2 billion books annually. So the environmental impact is drastically different, especially with footwear material, mostly in synthetics. So with uh, footwear shoes, we're talking about an, an emission of around 30 pounds of CO2 per year. And if we compare the average CO2 emission of a car, then it's 4.6 metric tons per year. So we're talking about two, 24 billion pairs of shoes would be equivalent to annual emission of over 150 million cars. Okay. And if we talk about books, that's only 2.2 billion books is only 10% of the total footwear production. So we buy so much more. We actually, we, maybe it's not even purchased. It is only produced. Yeah, so everyone's got two feet and, and everyone has more than one pair of shoes. There you go. So, <laughs> so how can we reduce impact within the footwear industry? Um, better design, material choices, process control and sustainable chemistry? We need to approach it within a systemic way. We need to have better material choices, reduction of impact through process control. We need to have better waste management circularity and then a smart control over the production volume we need to have less inventory and better placement of distribution marco do you have anything to add to that yes uh, i can add a provocative answer which is uh, uh, just sell less if we sell <laughs> less, of course uh, the impact will be lower but of course okay. there are not so many companies which are willing to decrease or so now, let's say that from my perspective, I would suggest uh, coming from the synthetic rubber like uh, we do for our soles, uh, we see that changing too much the material on top of this in some application is different, uh, is as difficult. Uh, if you think at work and safety, we have some chemicals for a firefighter that do, do need to have the shoes which is not melting on the fire. And we have a toxic chemical, we have bad chemicals, but we cannot avoid it. Uh, to make uh, the people able to do what they do. So sometime on the material we have constraint and we need to accept what is uh, available today with the technology of today. And we are working on uh, innovation to go in a different path. But the majority of the reduction of impact, as I mentioned, is more on uh, the process in my side, on the reduction of energy consumption, on the reduction of waste, because as uh, uh, Ron was mentioning, the inventory side, the ring of the chain have their own uh, uh, part of uh, inventory, extra inventory, which will be waste at the end. So ideally, if we can uh, squeeze the process and go on uh, buy on demand uh, and we produce only what is needed, maybe we can uh, reduce really a lot uh, in terms of vision for the future. Turning back to Blue Sign System Partners, can you explain how your partners fit into achieving Blue Sign footwear goals and how you got connected to Vibram? So many of our system partner brands have apparel and footwear lines. We have worked with their supply chain for many years. And as we spoke previously, the main thing to address circularity or actually sustainability is about better design. So I've worked with apparel for a long time, especially in outdoor. Every year we look to market this air permeability and water repellency because it's the only function you can quantify. So now 
we want to work with the brands to have better design, better material choices. And this is where we have been working with companies such as Patagonia, where they address their material choices, or Osprey with their material choices or process choices such as Dope Dye, or Nemo, such as the laminates they're using. And this is very important to us. And with footwear, this is the next step. We want to work with them to adopt new technology. There are traditional technologies which need to be bridged. And we accept that with our process control. There are emission issues, there are workplace issues, but there are process controls which you can adapt current technology. And you can keep feeding to this until the next actual proven technology can be adopted. Okay, and can you tell us from a brand perspective, um, what first jumped out to you for connecting with Blue Sign, Marco? Uh, let's say I can go on the strategy side saying that uh, for Vibram, which is, uh, let's say, one of the leaders in the market of sole business, uh, so with a good knowledge of footwear, we are leader, but I want to just to precise that uh, out of the 24 billion of uh, pair of shoes uh, that uh, Ron was mentioning, manufactured every year, we manufacture only 55 million of pair of soles. So we are a peanuts uh, comparing to the huge uh, footwear market, but we are in the technical side. So we feel uh, that uh, being uh, horizontal below the, let's say, many brands, <laughs> uh, we can make, uh, we can act as an integrator and bring the footwear industry to the next level of sustainability. So the idea was really to partner in with somebody like Blue Sign. Many of our customers are apparel and footwear, so they know already the Blue Sign certification from some extent. So the idea was uh, we don't have yet uh, an international standard to certify and to make uh, proper things in the right way for sustainability. There are a lot of private companies like Blue Sign, but we found Blue Sign one of the most uh, rigorous, one of the most uh, challenging and uh, covering the majority of the aspects. So we approached them or we had the chance to meet together in probably in 2019. And we were sharing the need of uh, saying we need in the footwear industry something like you have uh, uh, here for the certification you have on textile. So can we put together the effort, the energy and the knowledge in order to enlarge your certification to footwear as well? So now after a few years of work, because I have to admit that Blue Sign methodology is very strong and uh, heavy, let's say, you need to do uh, many things. But on the other side, we were bringing to the market the possibility to uh, enlarge this certification. And uh, we are at the stage where we are partnering with some, uh, let's say, some footwear brand to make the first certification of footwear. So the circle will be closed and we will uh, act uh, doing uh, all the positive that we possibly can. And can you shed some light on how the need for supply chain transparency has transformed over the years? Well, let's say supply chain is really, in my opinion, I'm not saying unknown, but was always uh, investigated only on the productivity and uh, economical side, let's say. Today, we are investigating and trying to get information on all the other aspects that were not taken into under control. And uh, under control, I mean that we know information. We don't need to let's say, to change the supply chain. Sometimes we cannot, sometimes we could influence, but the majority of the first big job is really to understand and to know. So measuring and having the data. In this, uh, let's say, I have the responsibility of sustainability since uh, 2018, so it's not a long journey, it's six, seven years, maybe eight. It's something where we were working in engaging them making them understanding that we need to make this journey on sustainability, which is just at the starting point today. And uh, we were, uh, let's say, learning from them because sometimes we do better things. Uh, sometimes there are other, our partners are doing better things. And uh, in sustainability, really, the field is so open, so wide that we need to cooperate and work together in order to get uh, improvement. So the step made are we got the data of course, of our supply chain, we are now understanding, we are improving all side, let's say our external manufacturing, our raw material supplier. Some of them are huge companies, so they are better than us or maybe more advanced. We need to work together to do the right things in order to reduce the impact. For me, 
I really believe in reducing the impact because until today, we always measure only profitability. Profitability is, uh, from my perspective, uh, one of the most important for sustainability. I mean, sustainability needs to bring profitability. And if you think uh, that the world of sustainability is uh, reducing waste and making efficiency, so it is possible. <laughs> But on the other side, uh, for profitability, we need to avoid losing time on bureaucracy. So if we find one standard, like the Blue Sign one, and all the industry, I'm not saying that Blue Sign can go for automotive or uh, food industry or other, maybe in the future, but not today. If uh, by industry we can focus on some of the standard, we reduce the time of filling in questionnaires of other companies and we can make a real action on improving. And then on circularity. Circularity is the future. We, if we can avoid draining resources from the planet, uh, would be the preferred option. If we can reuse and remake. But I can tell you from the experience of rubber, rubber is vulcanized. It's a product which cannot be like plastic, melt down and we bring to new life who is the same product. We have downcycling. So it's a long journey. We have to study. We need uh, the help of everybody to do the right things and to bring positive uh, impact for the future of our, not only planet, but for our life in this planet for the future. Thank you. Uh, Ron, just back to you. How, how do you set yourself apart from other industry players looking to provide similar services as BlueSign does? So as we mentioned, BlueSign has been around for more than 20 years. We provide a whole suite of tools and we base ourselves on input stream. And what we call, what we base on input stream because we verify or we assess the chemicals due to their hazard and exposure. And this is very important to us because then we output approved chemistry for the manufacturers to use. And we say that whenever you produce something that fails, the environmental impact has already been created. That's why we want to move the control in the input. And this is one of the different ways that we have established ourselves compared to the other standards, which are based on testing at the end or testing in the chemical side. And now we want to move further ahead. We want to decarbonize through material choice, process management, chemical systems, and build up blue sign circularity. And the target is to establish best practice engage our buyer community. I agree with Marco. We want to capture the actual value to sustainability. If there's no value to this, enterprises will not continue with this development. So this is something that we want to, to run and operate and develop long-term partnerships. So we are very complete in our approach and we invite everyone to join us on the journey. Right. And, and how much do you both think consumer awareness affects the brand's actions? For us, uh, I think consumer nowadays understands and can differentiate between the general differences between marketing gimmicks and actual solutions. It's just they need to be explained more clearly. And it is our responsibility in our industry to give a clear picture of the methodologies we're using and the results in very plain language. From um, my idea, the consumer is a uh, king. I mean, uh, we always, uh, in sustainability, we talk more on citizen because we need to give the impact of what we are doing to everybody, even on uh, the people that are not buying our products. But in terms of consumer, I see them as the profitability side. I mean, if they are buying, they can move uh, companies quicker in the right direction. So if we can educate them because today as a consumer i go in a shop i see two pair of shoes and i cannot understand even if i'm expert of sustainability i cannot see what is sustainable more sustainable than the other one maybe it's only the story that the company is saying today so we need a lot of education and measuring giving the Uh, data and giving the information with traceability and digital product passport and all this uh, uh, way, probably we will arrive to a, a level where communication can be uh, meaningful for the consumer. But for sure, the consumer, when they will buy, they will move the attraction of the company. Today, as a sustainability director, I can tell you, sometimes I feel the one which is controlling the work of others. I mean, the pain asking to change something in the company or to do things where 
I'm a cost and not yet a profit. So it's a long journey. We need to do it, uh, but I'm sure that when we can make consumer aware and understanding what is uh, the conscious choice, then they can choose to do something uh, not very sustainable, but at least they have the information to make the choice. Yeah, and following on from that, do you find that there's been some sort of tangible feedback from your customer base since you've incorporated the Blue Sign system? But let's say not really from the consumer side, due to the fact that we are B2B, let's say, component for shoes, we see the interest from some of our customers, let's say, the shoemaker. And today is really like, uh, oh, if you are doing it, probably it's important that we follow as well. It's not yet uh, something where everybody is approaching and going to sign, please give me your certification. But, uh, of course, uh, I'm pretty sure that with the strategy that we set up to have... Uh, the first partner certifying the shoes and making this uh, visible to consumer or to the market in general, of course, uh, we will see a lot of movement in that direction. In any case, when we started at the beginning of 2024 to announce and to um, give uh, the market, uh, or even in 2023, the, giving to the market the information of our partnership on the outcome, I saw a lot of interest in the industry to say, okay, now we have a method, we can do something, let's try, and this is our push, as I mentioned before, to converge to a unique system and unique way to certify so we can talk the same language and we can compare things. Right. And another question for both of you, really. What's coming up for the future of your partnership and the future of the footwear industry? <laughs> but let's say uh, I see the partnership as a long journey. We need to do some step in order to engage uh, our customer, let's say the shoemaker. And uh, the other step, in my opinion, is that Blue Sign become more visible for consumer. As we said before, if the consumer is aware and see the value of this, uh, I'm not saying that he will be prepared to pay more because, in my opinion, sustainability in the future will be uh, let's say mandatory or granted in the product so they will make the choice to buy the shoes of the companies that are respecting some principle and some uh, results so i'm pretty sure that this uh, step of education is something that we need to do together and not only the two of us but even uh, the association let's say of the food industry and all the way we have to get uh, to the market so I see a long work together in order to engage more people and people, I mean, companies in footwear industry and to bring this, uh, let's say, little uh, stone rolling like an avalanche in the future and uh, involve everybody in the industry. And Ron? So I think for Blue Sign as well, we look to form a long-term partnership and we look to build up Blue Sign approved products where we have a lot of reach with our different partners of brands and retailers. So we can show the consumers more on Blue Sign, what we're do, working with, with Vibram and how the shoe is made with environmental reductions and how we can show the consumers better products for choice. Okay, and what actionable steps can individuals take to support the movement towards sustainable footwear? Right now, I think it is our economy is still based on consumption. And we have really, really good analytics in marketing right now. And so this volume of production can now be made very smartly, intelligently quantified for production where we can show which of the products are selling and how they can re-inventory their pipeline. And this is very important because this plays a big role in the supply chain. I think the consumer can make intelligent choices and they may base it with their purchasing. And this will show in the background with the data analytics and eventually the supply chain will start producing the products that are actually purchased more. Okay, and Marco? Yeah, uh, let's say the principle is the same. Uh, individuals can change the world making small action. The small action I suggest is, as I mentioned before, to buy less and buy better. So mm -hmm. avoid to have uh, 20 pair of shoes in your uh, cupboard when uh, you are using only few of them during the year. So the idea is, uh, and we are in the technical side, in the high level side, if you want. So to buy something maybe more expensive, but more durable, more uh, in the direction of having the proper 
tool to do what you want to do. And uh, if you see the company side on this, uh, in my opinion, we can uh, go really on that direction because we don't need uh, to make fast fashion changing too much every day. But probably the population in the world is growing. The people who have uh, the richness in the future to buy something more uh, appealing, more durable, more performing are there, will be there. So we don't need uh, to decrease uh, the market, but only to move it to more performance, more uh, durable, something which is more, uh, let's say, valuable. And uh, if you, we would like a provocation, and this is more on us as a company, to change the world in terms of uh, today we are uh, Vibram is selling souls, so maybe tomorrow we'll sell steps or we sell uh, services on uh, walking and so on. So try to do something that is avoiding uh, huge consumption. I don't know if you ski, but uh, uh, on the ski business, uh, you probably know that you ski one week, you go to rent some ski boots and ski, and you don't need to buy something that you say, that it will stay in your uh, uh, canteen, in your uh, somewhere in, uh, in the garage for uh, 50 to 51 week when you ski only one. If uh, we are sharing and we are changing our mindset in consumption, individual can really change the world, in my opinion. Okay, I, maybe I'd like to ask you then, Marco, as a final question, how many pairs of shoes do you have in your cupboard? I have, uh, I have a few, I mean, uh, probably more than 20. I have to say, and I try to justify myself that I have to test even competition, so I need to have some of them. No, but I, I can tell you that out of some of them, I have uh, five, six, which are my preferred one that I use every day, and probably uh, the, the reference I can give a suggestion is uh, when you throw away a shoes uh, or an apparel or whatever, see if you uh, are throwing away because it's at the end of life or it's just because the color is changed, the model is changed and uh, you buy too much uh, uh, shoes or too much things uh, instead than um, buying the right number of, uh, of shoes that you need. Okay. Uh, well, maybe it's only fair if I ask Ron, how many pairs of shoes do you have? Oh, I <laughs> close to what Marco said <laughs> around twenty. I myself, I think I'm probably I'm the winner of this. I think I've only got four pairs of shoes and uh, two pairs of football boots. Yeah, my wife always complains that I, I just wear shoes until they totally disappear from my feet. But I think that's what Marco Marco is suggesting. So um, I'm I'm doing my little bit. As we conclude this second episode of the Changing Conversations podcast by SGS we've delved into the significant impact and scale of the footwear industry and explored various strategies for reducing environmental footprints through better design, material choices, process control, and sustainable chemistry. We've also highlighted the importance of supply chain transparency and how partnerships like the one between BlueSign and Vibram are paving the way for a more sustainable future in footwear. Our experts shared valuable insights into how consumer awareness is influencing brand actions and what tangible feedback has been received since incorporating the Blue Science system. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe to our podcast to stay updated with future episodes. A special thanks to my guests, Ron Hu and Marco Guazzoni, for sharing their expertise and perspectives.